Thank you guys, especially Pjobs and Alan. What do you think of NASA's? What are the first things that come to mind? Probably stacking and maybe Trick 2G yelling. Right but when it comes to TFT, NASA's has always been a bit more of a sidekick than the star. He's often just a good boy wagging his tail with his tongue hanging out. And fun fact, did you know that NASA's didn't even make the cart for set one? Also, you ever notice how Reddington only ever shows up when NASA's does? It's like they're a package deal. But seriously, why isn't Croc in more sets? Where's my Crocker boy right? NASA's made his TFT debut in set two, tagging along with Rennington like the loyal puppy he is. Both were one cost, but let's be real, Rennington was the real star in the egg roll comp, and Nasus, well, he was kind of a letdown. The light trait was, to put it politely, a bit dim. Sure, there was the infamous Light Z and some sins comps, but Nasus, he was a bench warmer. Even when Riot tossed him a bone with some buffs, players were like, nah, we're good. And even as a warden, he was outclassed by pretty much everyone else. And his ability to grow in size and deal a smidge more damage, yeah, not exactly the Nasus we know and love from the Rift, is it? More like a beach pump than a sand gone. In fact, let's be honest, it was always pretty much just there to be a light stack and a glorified Yorick ghoul, and honestly, the ghoul was probably more useful. And for those who don't know, Light gave attack speed on death and Yorick summoned ghouls for people to spawn when they died. Like Warwick, Nasus didn't make the cut for 3 or 3.5, confirming that only Russian dogs are allowed in space. Even in set 4, he didn't appear. But when you're right and you're thinking Ascension, what comes to mind? Clearly, K1 Nasus. Two units from different regions of Rune Terror tied by some cosmic idea to be the strongest fucking unit. This was when the Doge finally had his day, and as a one cost, you wouldn't expect him to have a raid of terror, but in fact, the infamous reroll murder at the start of set 4.5. Nasus became an absolute menace. With Siphoner and Divine, a three-star Nasus was a bit like a bulldog on steroids, throwing hands with the best of them. His ability Wither wasn't just a minor inconvenience for enemies, it didn't just slow them down, it completely dismantled them, reducing their attack speed by 50% and shredding every single damage potential that they had. Remember Frozen Heart Pike? It was a bit like that, but baked into an ability specifically designed to fight with the back line. Imagine Yasuo, one of the best champions of 4.5, trying to slice through your team, only to get withered and turned into a glorified cheerleader, barely managing to muster up the courage for an auto attack. And Nasus, well he could cap out with Swain or Morgana and splash in some Morelia and a few adepts for some good measure. He was an unkillable dream tank, a literal team of death just by himself and one fairy package. The doge had finally ascended and anyone who dared underestimate him found themselves in a very bad spot, usually going top 8, wondering how a one cost unit had just steamrolled their entire team. The best part, he looked like he was just doing it on a casual stroll while obliterating everything in his path. His next appearance though, was in 7.5. Our little doggy had to go back to the kennel. Set for 7.5 is when NASA swapped places with Kane and fetched a spot as a top tier trait bot for Iodus. Giving them both the Guardian trait was a bit like giving your frontline the ultimate kibble. Suddenly, you've got a rock solid defense that's harder to crack than a doggy proof treat jar. Plus, with the shimmer scale items, you generate so much value from your little pups, they would fully grow into the Nefiri dogs by the end of the game. And let's not forget the Dragon Monster spatula, that thing that everyone was slapping onto anything that moved. Nasus became the go to good boy for this, turning into an absolute tail wagging, tongue lolling juggernaut. Imagine a pup with a million health trotting around the battlefield like a big dog on campus, turning his enemies into mere squeak toys. And it's interesting because he had the same form as in set too, but this time the only thing that changed was he generated gold and sometimes got a Dragon Master spatula, which is going to show maybe light was the problem and not Nasus, but who's to say? 8 and 8.5 is when the world of League of Legends Nasus and TFT finally collided, bringing us the first ever stacking mechanic for our favourite doge. And if you want to stack that light button, let's say with at least 12 stacks, I'll keep the videos coming. That's on your cannon minion. Also, drop a comment on which champion you want to see next. I'll make a poll for the top 4 so the community can decide. So anyway, in 8 and 8.5, Nasus made his return as a one cost mascot. And you're probably thinking, one cost again? Come on, right? But don't let that fool you. With his carry hero augment, Nasus transformed into to a menace. If you managed to steamroll stage 2 with this bad boy, it wasn't uncommon to break his leash and charge all the way to victory thanks to the absurd amount of raw AD he stacked throughout the game. The doge was basically walking around with a gym membership to Planet Swell, flexing on anyone who dared challenge him. And don't get it twisted with him being a mascot. 
He was more than just a cheerleader. He was a star player putting on a clinic while the rest of the team watched in awe. Now, if you got your support hero augment, you might have felt a bit underwhelmed. After all, it was basically a glorified healing orb, and that's not exactly thrilling. Hey, it was still something, right? Sure, it wasn't his best, but it was serviceable. And I mean, even if you didn't get his hero augment, he was still a mascot, so you had a range of boards to play around. You could play for Animal Squad or get Alistair in for Oxforce and use him as a bridge to get to New New Lake game. 8 and 8.5 will go down as one of the best times for the doggy, and whether you were trying to do your best Vagar impression and get as much AD as possible, or just enjoying the mascot vibes, he had his place for the entirety of that sale. Now let's fetch some of the coolest moments in TFT for NASA's, but I have a bone to pick. In my mind, NASA's needs to be stronger, not just in set 12, but across the board. Over the years, he's only been a 4 or a 1 cost, never anything else. But imagine a Nasus that was the three cards, similar to Set 10's Mordekaiser, who also had a stacking mechanic by the way, or better yet, almost if he was a five cards. Riot could really let the leash off and design the ultimate godlike Nasus, fully embracing his ascension and his Egyptian god theme. What do you think? What kind of Nasus would you want to see? Set 9 was the first time Nasus wasn't just a one cost pup. With his stat stealing ability and empowered autos, he finally felt like the top dog he was always meant to be. Sporting the juggernaut trait and hailing from Sharima, which is one of the best traits of the entire set, Nasus was running around with the Alphas, Cassante, Azir, Atrox, Garen, and Darius, and Sharima had his moments where it was like a desert cyclone, tearing up the field and leaving the competition howling in defeat. The Ascension theme really came to be in set 9 and 9.5, especially with Renekton making a comeback, and set 9 felt like a true to law League of Legends meets TFT, and it was awesome. In 9.5, not much change for Nasus, except for the introduction of Bilgewater and some other units. Now you had options, you didn't have to stick with Azir, you could sniff out new opportunities with Neela, or with Silco with his reintroduction, you could play around Zorn or even challenges in some case to make both doggies run together. It felt like no matter what comp you were chasing, Nasus always managed to catch the scent and find his way into the pack. And now we fast forward to set 12 and Nasus is back as a pyro and a shapeshifter. Oh boy, this dog is cool as hell. And the theme they've given him this time is incredible. He really embodies that Anubis vibe, the god of the underworld, stealing souls and growing stronger with each second. Pyro is one of the most flexible traits in the set, and Nasus is at the top. Give him a ton of health and he becomes a sustained tank for your backline to do the heavy lifting. But don't be fooled, this dog isn't just wagging his tail, his bite is just as strong. Every time he casts, he delivers a massive bonk to make sure he leaves his mark. And now Nasus has so many things that you can do with him. You can actually just get a Talisman of Ascension. Oh boy, does he become an absolute god with millions of health. I mean, some people even get to 40,000 health which is crazy. You can play him with Varus backline, you can play him with Vertical Shapeshifter. There's almost limitless potentials you can do with Nasus. But still, I want more. I want him to be stronger, faster, and a five cost that tears through the competition and destroys them. No one just leaves him like a broken tree toy. But I'm really interested to see where Riot takes him from here, because he does have the potential to be incredible, and I hope the forecast meta overtakes the reroll eventually. So where do I rate Nasus amongst other champions? I'll give him A for a very good boy.